who are you willing to die for? That is basically what Jesus asked, in his, asked of his disciples in today's gospel lesson. Yes, it's a bit mo more poetic in the NRSV translation as it says, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friend. But you hear the subtext, right? Maybe not from Jesus himself, but from the last 2,000 years of interpretation and theologizing. If you are, aren't willing to die for someone else, can you say you actually love them? So who are you willing to die for? It's probably a short list. A few close friends, family members, but even then, let's be honest, by family you mean your spouse, your child, your grandchildren, maybe your parents, and maybe a sibling, but definitely not all the aunts and uncles and cousins. Because can you really say you're willing to die for your same uncle that you intentionally try to sit as far away from as possible at Thanksgiving dinner so that you don't get stuck talking to him about his most recent conspiracy theory? And while we might say that we are willing to die for others, it's kind of hard to judge that. It's not like the majority of our loved ones are dying most days and we can only save them with our own life. And often when our loved ones do die, they die in ways that we aren't able to save them. As they die from incurable diseases, accidents that are really no one's fault, or from old age. But here, Jesus is telling his disciples that they should be willing to die for their friends, their loved ones. All of this has taken place on Monday, Thursday evening. Jesus had just washed his disciples' feet. He told them that one of the disciples would betray him and that Peter would be deny him. And now he is lecturing the disciples for four chapters of the Gospel of John about how he is about to die, but he won't leave them alone that the Holy Spirit is coming. He prays for those disciples and reminds them of his greatest teachings, his teachings about love. As Jesus knows he's about to be arrested and put to death, he takes the time to tell his disciples about love. There is a quote that has been floating around social media. It's a quote that comes up every few months, and it's attributed to Ethan Keller, who wrote this on what was then the website known as Twitter. And it says, if you want to be someone's ally, but haven't been hit by the stones that are thrown at them, you aren't standing close enough to them yet. This is love, standing close enough to the people that you care about, that you are getting hit by the stones thrown at them. Not just telling people that you support them or that you honor their right to exist or even telling people that you love them, but physically getting in the way of the stones that are hurled at them to not only block them from being injured, but to take on the injuries for yourself. Love is not just an emotion. It is also an action. It is what makes us compelled to not just tell someone that we care for them, but that we are willing to die for them, that we are willing to lay down our lives for our friends. And we are called to have this great love for our friends and family, but also for strangers, to be willing to get in the way of the rocks thrown at others, to be willing to be insulted, mocked, ridiculed, and even spat on and physically attacked because of the company that we keep. During much of the 20th century, Segregationists knew that a way to keep other white people from challenging white supremacy and from segregation was to call their fellow white people who questioned racial norms N-word lovers. White supremacists knew that by taking the insult that they spewed onto black people and turning it around on their own race, that it would keep people in check and keep them from challenging racial norms and segregation practices. Yet because there was enough black people who picked up the stones that were thrown at them and threw them back, and enough white allies who got in the way of those stones, sometimes even to the point of giving their life, segregation is no longer the law of the land. But racism and xenophobia and transphobia and homophobia and classism all still influence our culture today. And Jesus calls us to be willing to lay down our lives for our friends 
but also for strangers, to stand close enough to people who are often insulted, mocked, ridiculed, spat on, and physically attacked, so that we too are insulted, mocked, uh, in ridiculed, spat on, and physically attacked. To take on the stones that are being thrown in their direction. This is who Jesus calls us to be in allyship with. For Jesus, love is not an emotion, but an action. And God's love for us is not just an emotion, but an action. God's love sent Jesus to earth to teach us about love. To show us that love is greater than death. God sent Jesus to die for us, that the world might be saved through him. God's love is the ultimate sacrifice of death over death. Yes, Jesus died for his friends, his disciples, so that they would not be killed alongside him. But Jesus also died for others. He literally got in the way of the stones being thrown at the, uh, thrown at the woman caught in adultery in John 8. His love for Lazarus was so great that he wept at the empty tomb and brought him back to life. He got on his hands and knees and washed the, uh, the disciples' feet as he became like a servant to them. This was Jesus' love in action. And Jesus' love is in action for us today. Jesus died for us so that 2,000 years later, we would not have to suffer from sin but have eternal life. Jesus' teachings about love still come to us in Scripture and all these years later. Jesus stands in the ways of the thrones being lobbed at us when others are called to stand up for us. And Jesus stands in the ways of stones being lobbed at others when Jesus calls us to stand up for others. This is love in action. This is God's love in action. Jesus' love was not just for a select few, because Jesus was willing to die not only for a select few people like his parents and his close friends. Instead, Jesus was willing to die for all people. And it's because of this love, this immense grace, that we are now, all these years later, able to see Jesus in each and every one of our fellow human beings, because each and every person, including you, are loved by Jesus. And with such a great love that Jesus died for each and every person, including you. So maybe the question should not be, who are you willing to die for? But who are you called to die for? Which can also mean, who are you called to love? Or who are you called to love in action to the point that you stand in the way of the stones being thrown at them? I hope that that answer to that question is much longer. And I hope that the answer to that question is everyone, all of God's people, Every person who, when you look into their face, you see Jesus. And hopefully, we also remember that Jesus has stood in the way of the stones that are lobbed at us. Amen.